Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode on the challenges of triumph of online teaching during COVID-19 at the Female Educators Roundtable with your host, Debbie Eno from Teacher Success Coach. Sorry I wasn't able to come on yesterday. The internet was just giving us some challenge. Right. Thank you guys for actually logging on and coming online. Sorry we're a little bit late. You know, we're just having a little bit of issues before we came on. I would like to thank my guests for coming on. Thank you very much. I really yeah. appreciate your coming on because as you know, it wasn't so planned, sorry. Thank <laughs> you very much. Can you please introduce yourself? Tell us the country you come from and the age group of students you teach. Okay, so my name is Brenda Nyango. I'm from Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya. And I teach college students so age between 16 to about 25 years old, yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, as I keep saying on the platform every day when I come on, one of the challenges of teaching for us educators, we were not trained on the online platform. We had to teach ourselves as we go along. And I must say, educators, make no doubt, have no doubt about it. You have done so very, very, very well because you had no knowledge, some of us, in terms of teaching online and how to negotiate the platform. But we taught ourselves and we didn't think we swam. As educators, we always think on our feet. And we've done that very well. Ignore what the press is saying to you because they're saying that you are lazy. We don't want to go back to school, who we think we are. And the negative goes on. But you must, re you must remember, they'll always condemn you when you say something. Because you see, in the mind of the masses, and when some people say that we are superheroes, do not accept such labels. Because when you accept that label, you are saying that you agree with it and superheroes are not real. That's the reason why they think we are not real when we accept the labels. Do not accept unrealistic labels because I am not a superhero. I'm a parent, I'm a daughter, I'm a niece, I'm an auntie, I'm all of that. So the reason why we are demonstrating the fear of going back to the classroom we feel that there have not been enough, um, enough safeguarding so that we are protected. And in the same way, other people are afraid of this virus because it, was, it is unknown and we don't have enough information about it. That's the same way as educators, we are also demonstrating our fears. And remember, some of us are teaching children from three years old. And in terms of the way we teach them, it's very different from someone walking in a supermarket. Someone in a supermarket, their customer do not come close up to them. They have a barriers. With educator, the students come close to us. The three-year-old, could you imagine? You're teaching three-year-old and you say, oh, stay off, you can't come close to me. They would make several attempts to still try to come close to you because they're forgetting. Hence the reason why we are anxious. Hence the reason why we are fearful because we don't know. The extent, you know, we don't know how the virus is. We're just listening to what we're hearing from the press. So like you, we humans. Hence the reason why we are demonstrating uncertainties and fears. Remember, I am not preaching. I'm just saying it as it is. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> educators, you've done well. I believe in you. I trust you. You've done well, and I'm proud of you. So make no mistake about it. Ignore the chatter because they'll always chat, especially when we're actually standing up for ourselves. Anytime somebody, a group of people stand up for themselves, they're always chatter and they're always condemnation. I accept that. Anyway, Brenda. Yes. <laughs> Thank yes. you again for coming online. Can You're you welcome. <laughs> Can you share with us some of your experience of what it was like teaching mm -hmm. online? So first experience, of course, getting onto the platform, understanding the different options that are there. That was a challenge. Some of us have never used Zoom. We discovered Zoom because of online <laughs> teaching. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
And then we had to break down, we had to break the communication barriers that were there. Students are not allowed to call you on your, tel on your mobile number while you're home, but now you have to break that yes. and you yes. have to communicate with them on mobile phone, you have to communicate to them on the WhatsApp groups, they can text you, they can send you a WhatsApp, they can call you. So that was a bit interesting to adjust to, yeah, yeah. but uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah. good because, because of us adjusting to that, the communication is more open and in case of any challenges, they can communicate very fast. So yeah, but now I've been teaching online since uh, May, yeah, since May, and I feel like I've gotten used to it. Um, I, uh, I now understand this button does this. This is how you start a presentation. <laughs> this is how you share your slide, yeah. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the whiteboard, you know, all the little things, yeah. But now I feel like I'm confident using the online teaching platforms that are there. And now the challenges are more on the interacting with the students in terms of assignments. Are they submitting on time? Are they understanding? Are they showing up in class? Because sometimes someone might have a challenge, a student might have a challenge. Maybe there's a power blackout at their house, so they're not able to join the class. Yeah, sometimes they don't have internet, so they are not able to join class. Sometimes they have responsibilities because college is a bit different. Like college, you have students who are parents, yeah? Mm -hmm. I have some of my students who have kids. Mm -hmm. So when they are in class and they're trying to listen, their child is calling them, their child is touching something. So it might distract the class if they have their audio and their camera on. But uh, we are slowly managing such issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So in terms of um, the dynamics in relationship to, you know, the mature student, because the things are very different, because as you rightly remind us that they're parents. So you also mean that they're sometimes they're coming on to the session and the child calling them. They need to do something. So the situation, do you have, is it compulsory that they have the camera on? Uh, it is compulsory, but uh, you have to give them that room to attend to something that has come up, yeah? Mm -hmm. You have to allow them to go and attend to it because there's no point of them being on and they're distracted. They, are, they keep looking back, uh, the child calls them, the child comes in front of the camera. So you have to be flexible, yeah? Mm -hmm. To allow them to attend to such situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. what was it like in terms of? I know you're teaching adult students. So, in terms of engagement, what was that like? Uh, they do in terms of engaging during class time. Yeah. Yeah, they participate. They are uh, they are very involved. They pay attention. They are there on time. Uh, not always, but they are there. They come. Yeah, and they're very involved. They'll ask questions. They'll ask you, are we having a, an exam in this class? Are we having an assignment? When is the assignment due? They mm -hmm. are quite involved and the engagement is okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how many students did you have in the physical classroom to the amount you have on the online platform now? What's the difference? How many you had in physical classroom? The physical classroom, there were more. Yeah, okay. because I teach different classes, but I would say in a physical classroom, there are more, now there are fewer, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, could be not that they're not interested, but because of the other challenges that have come with COVID-19, yeah? Mm -hmm. Someone might want to join, but because their parents cannot pay the school fees, because their business has been affected by COVID, then they are not mm -hmm. able to join. Then there's the issue of internet and access to internet, so some students who would love to join cannot be able to join. Mm -hmm. Then for some, it could be just because of preference. They prefer to be in the normal classroom sitting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, again, those are the issues that have affected the numbers, yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So the thing about it is what's happening for students, you know, with the challenge you've just identified. So how do you support them to you know, to get the work, what do you do? Uh, 
So to get the work, um, number one, I'm, I'm very flexible with them. I try to be flexible. If someone is not able to attend a class because of one reason or another, I am I, I'm, I can reschedule the class. I can I'll always ask them. Yeah, I'll always ask them at what time are you available? We can reschedule so that we cover the content, you know, mm -hmm. because we need to cover what is they are supposed to cover and they need to be able to do the exam comfortably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm very flexible in term in terms of time and rescheduling of classes. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, also if they have, I, I have to be understanding to students who are parents and have other responsibilities. Mm -hmm. If they have emergencies, I, I make arrangements for them to be comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So being flexible really helps. Yeah. There are challenges with internet and students not being able to access the internet. Unfortunately, that there isn't much I can do. Yeah. <laughs> that there isn't much I can do. Yes. But if, yeah, in terms of uh, ensuring that they get the content, I really, really try. And if I'm, if we are not able to have class, I'll send a recording. I'll send them, yeah, I'll send them a, a video. I'll find a video on YouTube. And if it's explaining what I have to explain during class, I'll share with them. Uh, I'll send them the notes. I always send the notes. I send mm -hmm. assignments in, uh, in time and I give them more time to, to finish up. Yeah, because I don't know what challenge they are having at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So what time your lesson, how long is the lesson and what time you start and what time you finish? How long is your lesson? So my lesson is one hour. Yeah, we just do mm -hmm. one hour then we give them time to go and read on what we've covered because if it's, it, it's hard to be online for more than an hour, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they are at home, yeah? Mm -hmm. So the lesson is one hour. We start at around 8.30 all the way to four, yeah? Okay. But, yeah, but I'm not online for all those hours. I have my classes. So let's say like on a Tuesday, I have a class at 8.30 to 9.30. Mm -hmm. Then I'll have some break. Then I'll have another class from uh, two o'clock to three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. So when you have, don't you find that the hour class, the hour session is quite long? Mm, not really. I don't find it long because uh, when when I feel they'll be bored because sometimes some topics are long and has a lot of explanation and you mm -hmm. might lose the students. So I'll start with a, a video. I'll start with an interactive session. I'll ask them, so uh, what do you think about this? Uh, have you read about this? Uh, the video I sent you last time, did you look at it? What did you, what, what, give us a summary of what you understood from the video. So mm -hmm. I try to make it uh, interactive, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that it's not boring and I lose them. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. In terms of, well, anyway, these people are too big to have any behavior issue. Did you have any behavior issue with them? Uh, hmm. <laughs> can, I, <laughs> can I say this? My students are going to, to be mad at me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so any behavior issue, the only problem I have is time. Like they don't keep time sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes people will come in late, 10 minutes past the time. And then you have that student who came in 10 minutes before time. So that's the thing I would say I wish they could adjust, yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. The time thing, because everything else is, um, is it something we can work on, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yes, it's okay. I see you, you know, trying to protect your student. You've got the right to do that. <laughs> In terms of communication, how did you form, you know, how effective you think in terms of you guys are communicating now on the platform to when you were in the physical classroom? What's the difference? Uh, I think communication has improved because now we've opened up several uh, options of communication. Yeah, they can do an email, they can do WhatsApp, they can call, they can send a direct message. So communication has improved. It's much better because these are young people that I'm teaching. It's easier for them to send you a WhatsApp message than sending you an email. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So it's, some of them consult on assignments 
via WhatsApp. They ask you, I don't understand what this meant. Do you mean this? Communication has opened up. And I think it's such a good thing. It's, it's, mm -hmm. In fact, I'm so happy about this online teaching. It's mm -hmm. different and it's nicer. And there's no, for our country, Kenya, the commute is very stressful. I'm sure yeah. in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. so, yes. So yes. The commute is yes. very stressful. Yes. I feel students are, can come to class more relaxed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when they're more relaxed, they are, they are paying attention, they are listening, they're enjoying, the, the, they enjoying being in class. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing somehow, mm -hmm. somehow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like me. I do. Um, I think it's, it's fantastic. I really do. You know, in terms of, you yeah. Know, it's, one of the sad things for educators, educators are that every industry have shift except in education. If you think of any industry mm -hmm. in terms of technology, they actually embrace technology in a big way. The only area that did not have a technology shift was in education. We needed that because, you know, you have educators saying, oh, well, we've always done this this way. Okay, that was then. We're now in the 21st century. So we need to move with the 21st century. Because when you look at the classroom, physical classroom, how it is, it's the same place, same way as how my great grandmother used to be in the same physical classroom. The Absolutely. only difference is it's been replaced from a blackboard to whiteboard, an interactive board, the same situation. You and know, I. I agree with you 100%. I was always wishing for us to have education done in a different way. You know, yeah. that's in my class, I like using videos because some students are not, they don't understand when you're there talking and talking and talking, but if you send them a video, it will get into their head and they'll understand, you know? Mm -hmm. But we've kept, we've, we've retained this old system that has been there for, years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And I think this, even when schools open, we should find a way to still use the online platforms, mm -hmm. use the different things we've discovered about education, yeah? But when schools open, let's not go back to our traditional way of teaching. Let's mm -hmm. use these new things that we've discovered. Because education is, you're trying to build someone, you're mm -hmm. trying to empower them. You're trying to make them useful in the society, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you have to maximize how you're going to ensure that they've actually gotten that, yeah? Mm -hmm. you, 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 you have to maximize. And people are different, they learn differently. Mm -hmm. If someone is learning better because you're used, they are on Zoom and they're in the comfort of their home, why not, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah, let's diversify how we deliver content to students, yeah? Mm -hmm. we, we really need to. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is so interesting that you're saying that. And I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, wow, that is so very true. Because we have not been doing anything and COVID have actually forced us to become creative and innovative on the platform. Because we have to completely change our lessons around. Because there is no way we could use the, the physical classroom lesson to the online platform. We have to change it to fit the needs of the students. And I keep saying that in every session, what the online platform have done for us is when we do differentiation in the physical classroom, it is not fully differentiation. The platform have actually forced us to really differentiate because some students are saying, you know what? I'm not putting on my camera because I'm camera shy. So, you know, you know, they're differentiating. They're deciding, okay, I'm not going to come at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock is too early. I get up at 12. So I'm going to message my tutor and say to her, oh, can I see you at 12? And they're saying, okay, well, I don't really like the way this is done with the black with the uh, with the blackboard in the in the Zoom. So send me the video. So in terms of this platform have actually met students where they are in the comfort of their ability to learn how their learning style and the preferred learning style dictates. And that's what this platform have done. And it's amazing because we know you we know not one size fit all but we actually teaching to the needs of the students and it's wonderful it's really is wonderful i understand that some of my colleagues doesn't like 
you know, the online teaching because the fight is a lot of work, etc. cetera. But it's a matter of pacing yourself. You know, the first time we actually did it, you know, we went in like a bull in the china shop because we didn't know anything. We just, you know, give, give, give because we didn't know what to expect, etc. But this time going back onto the online platform for a second time, we know how to pace ourselves. And we should. We should. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, there's some areas where it's a little bit challenging in terms of, you know, how did you how did you do assessment? Did you do assessment on the online platform? Okay, how did you assess I, your students? So for assessment, I had to give them takeaway assignments. Oh. And yeah, this challenged me to to make the assignment more research based so that I could have different answers because I, you cannot give them define this. You cannot tell them um, something that you directly taught in class, you cannot test that. You have to make it, um, you have to look for an application of the concept that you taught. Therefore, they'll be able to do it on their own and think about this was taught like this, so this is the application. When I'm given this situation, can I be able to, to, to dissect it and present it based on the uh, facts that I was taught, based on the principles that I was taught? So the assignments have to be more practical, yeah, as opposed to just uh, define this, what is this? Uh, yeah, it has to be something they can apply, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm listening to that. Eh? Mm -hmm. And what this is demonstrating is it is it seems like it is making the teaching and the learning more applicable to the work of the world of work. Because something you say, which is interesting, that the assignment that had to be much more research based and practical. So in terms of how they actually use it out there, it's got to be a practical aspect. So that's what it seems like the online platform have actually taught us as educators. You need to be ready for the world of work because my argument have always been, mm -hmm. I do feel that education is not fit for purpose, i.e. it is not fit for the world of work. I do not feel that the education system as it is equipped students to mm -hmm. run with it into the workplace. It's true. What I, I agree. With, yeah, I agree with you. Education, we've made it speak in such a way when someone goes into the work environment, they don't know how to apply it. They don't know mm -hmm. how to transition from getting an A to now actually doing the work. Yeah. And you will find students will struggle. Many people will struggle. We need to make education something that actually helps you transition more smoothly, as opposed to being the reason why you're struggling. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's mm -hmm. COVID has taught us so much. Despite the negative, there's still some mm -hmm. positive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in all situation, in all negative situation, there is positive because yeah. there's plus and minus. Yep, definitely, definitely. Is that what's what in terms of um, you actually on the online platform? Are there things that you have taken from the physical classroom that you were able to slot straight into the online platform? And are there things you could take from the online platform to deliver straight into the physical classroom? Mm, there are things I've taken from uh, the physical classroom. Uh, let me see. First of all, my notes, of course, my teaching materials. Um, what else? Uh, taking attendance, um, having them participate in the class. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But actually, I don't see much difference. The only difference is that we are together on a, on a, before a camera. Mm -hmm. I don't see much difference because as much as a little things have changed here and there, making the class more communication, becoming better, uh, rephrasing the questions and the exam, making them more application-based. But I don't see much difference because we are just 
The only difference is that we are on a screen, but I don't see much difference. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In terms of teacher-student relationship, what do you think the relationship is like now? You say in terms of you guys are communicating better. So in terms of the whole relationship, what is the relationship like? Would you say that, you know, that's what kind of relationship would you say you have with your student? I think the relationship has become better because we've uh, opened up communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's easier for them to, to contact you and talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. And now they have a reason, they have, a, they have, what, what would I say? You know, in the normal class, maybe they are shy. They don't want to be seen talking to you one on one. They don't want to be seen, you know, all those things that different students have. But now mm -hmm. they can privately email you and say, I didn't understand, you know. So mm -hmm. it's become better. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really, for me, since I teach front office, uh, front office is a lot about being responsible and uh, um, being proactive, yeah. So for the students who I'm teaching front office, this online teaching has somehow helped me teach them that. When they know they are not going to make it to class, oh, yes. they email me. Like yesterday, a student of mine uh, emailed me in the evening because she was not going to make it for class this morning. So she just sent me an email on, not even from her own email address, from someone else's email address. So I'm thinking maybe it's her, one of her relatives. And mm -hmm. she thought, oh, tomorrow I, I am, I'm supposed to have class with my lecturer, but I, am, I won't make it. I travel, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So she actually took the initiative to take someone else's phone or get a, access to someone else's email account and mm -hmm. send me an email just to explain I will not make it, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, mm -hmm. I think it's it's really a good thing. It's 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 helping me teach front office in particular and hospitality. It has mm -hmm. helped me teach them about being responsible and being proactive. Mm -hmm. Things I maybe I wouldn't have taught in a normal classroom because mm -hmm. in a classroom I come, I teach. You're not there in school because of A B C D. If you miss again, I'll follow up. But now for this one, it's more. It's 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 uh, you have to be responsible. You have to be proactive. You know, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the question I was going to ask you. Whether or not you feel that the online platform makes students more resp take responsibility for the learning and more proactive. Yeah, yeah. The students are more proactive. I am more proactive. I have to tell them early if I'm not going to make it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's a good thing. I know, okay, since I teach in a hospitality institution, there are other practical courses such as culinary arts, where the students have to be in a kitchen and make the different dishes, and now they can't, yeah? So that's, that's the, the group that's having a, a difficult time. But for theory classes, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, uh, it's good, it's good. For such practical courses, of course, they're having a, a very hard time. And now they have to be creative. We're having a discussion on what can we do? How can we teach this yeah. student without them being in the college? Yeah. So do yeah. we, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's an interesting conversation because do you tell them to buy all the ingredients and you cook together? Or what do you do? Or how will you mm. confirm that they put the ingredients in, in the right quantities? So That's true. The practical That's true. classes, it's, it's a bit challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very true because, you know, if you say to them, okay, let's, um, let's do bread today and they all bring the ingredients. Mm -hmm. One student could decide to keep the camera off and you don't know whether or not they're doing the ingredients. They could just say, yes, miss, I'm doing it, but you know they're not. You know, so that's the, in terms of the checking, that's the challenging bit in terms of checking whether or not students are doing what they say they're doing. That's the thing yes. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In term, thank you for that. In terms of student-student relationship, what's the dynamics been like? Student-student uh, relationship, that would be tricky for me to know. I, I, it would be hard for me to tell but what I know is now they are really communicating with each other. 
in terms of uh, do we have class? Uh, have you seen the, the link to the Zoom class? Have you, are we having class? Has the assignment been sent? I cannot be able to log in. How did you log in? So I feel it has really improved their relationship with each other because now if you're the shy student, you have to just uh, try and, and talk to your classmates and see what's going on, you know? Because now they are, they are free to consult, yeah? And uh, they'll send you, some students will call you and say, you know, I wanted to do this assignment like this, but I'm not sure because many of my classmates are saying this is the way we should do it. So that tells me they're really communicating more. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's very true. That's very true. Anyway, you don't have parents relationship. So because they're adults, they're over 16, isn't it? They're 16 or 18? Whoa, Brenda is frozen. Sorry, your, your network was shaky. Okay, yes, you were frozen. <laughs> oh, you were it's frozen. my network. <laughs> you were, it could be my network, freeze you, right? <laughs> Yeah. I was saying that you don't have any parents interaction, do you? The parents don't get involved. The parents don't talk to the you know, don't say, oh, you know, how my child is getting on. They're not allowed to, are they? Uh, the parents are involved. Sometimes when they're not sure, they'll call you. Yes, they'll <laughs> call you and ask, so uh, what, what's the plan? Are we going to continue? You know, we are teaching online, but uh, our decisions, the, the institution decisions on teaching online are affected by what the government says. Yeah, in terms of uh, now schools should close or schools are going to open on this date or schools are not going to open anymore. So the parents, sometimes they call you as the teacher because maybe they have your number one way or another mm -hmm. and they ask you. So you have to refer them to the school and uh, tell them you, you you cannot communicate you cannot give any information and they talk to the school. But uh, my my institution where I teach, the parents are really involved in, in okay. their students' life. Yeah, they are very involved. Really? Yeah, they want to know. <laughs> they really want to know what's going on. Are we having school? Are we not having? Yeah. Okay. So do you guys give them information about the child? Uh, we they are issued with now the an, an interim report. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's interesting because normally, in terms of once once a student is sick is eighteen years plus, you know the parents we do not tell the parents anything about the child because now this child is a is a young adult. You know, yeah. So. Uh, here we we do because it's the parent who's paying the school fees. Oh. So <laughs> they want to know is my money uh, <laughs> did I spend my money in the right for the right cause or not? Yeah. yeah, yeah they want yeah. to know. So yes, yeah. yes, I I see that because they now have a stakeholding in the in the whole education aspect because they're paying the money, so therefore they're a stakeholder. Yeah, very mm -hmm. true. Yeah. Very true. Mm -hmm. So what did you do in terms of self-care? How important was self-care for you? What did you do to ensure that you have, you know, you implement self-care throughout your day? So uh, self-care, I take breaks. When I don't have a class, I take a break. I make sure I'm eating. Yeah. And my classes are organized in such a way that I have breaks in between. Okay. I yeah I didn't take classes that are back to back, and if okay. I have classes that are back to back, I'll make sure I have a longer break after. Yeah, okay. like there's a time we're transitioning from one semester to another, and there was a, an overlap. So I made sure uh, even if the classes are following one another, I have a break, a longer break. Yeah, because one hour, like you said, one hour is not a short time. It That's it can be challenging to. Yeah, to talk and talk and talk and you yeah. get tired and you get confused, yeah. So I always take my breaks, I always eat, I have my water with me right there, yeah. And um, yeah, that's basically it. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, the, the important thing is at least you're giving yourself breaks. I've had educators who've said to me that 
the self-care was a bit on the offside because they were teaching back to back. And mm -hmm. as a result of teaching back to back, it means that you don't have a break. So as one class finishes, you are on the other, you know, ready for the next class. Mm -hmm. And that, as I said to them, is very unhealthy. So it during is. the, you know, when you're not at school, how do you, you know, in terms of self-care, what do you do when you're not at school, when you're not teaching online? How do you put implement self-care? When I'm not teaching online, I watch movies. Okay. <laughs> I watch a lot of movies. I listen to music. Music is, uh, is, is something I'm passionate about also. So I listen to music, as you can see here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> yeah, so I listen to music. I spend time with my family. This weekend, I travel to, to some place to just relax and just let off the steam. Yeah. Yeah, so it's yeah. important to just yeah. some, sometimes I just even sit and do social media, look at what people are doing, do my research. I talk to some yeah. other friends in psychology. I tell them, are you experiencing this? Are you feeling anxious? Are you worried? How are you dealing with it? So it helps me to just mm. calm down and refresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems like self-care for you is in place. It is. It is. <laughs> and I, I think it's, because, yeah. I, I'm saying so it's I'm, important. I don't know what you said, I missed that. Yeah. Oh, I'm saying, and it is also important. This platform is for female uh, teachers. So, as a female uh, in home, and you have the responsibility to to cook and clean and all that so you have mm -hmm. to balance and uh, at the beginning I had a meeting with some we had a zoom meeting with a couple of friends and they were saying it's so hard to be to work and uh, be at home at the same time because mm -hmm. you're doing it's mm -hmm. like having two jobs at the same time yeah mm -hmm. you're teaching yes you have your classes but when I'm done with classes, when I'm taking my break, I might just rest for maybe 30 minutes. Then the other 30 minutes, I'm doing something in the house. You know, mm -hmm. I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm doing, an, I'm running errands. Yeah, it's it's for women. I know it's it's hard. Yeah, for and my colleagues who have two kids, who have uh, big families. Now your kids can't just see you sitting before a computer and they're not. They're not calling you, mom, mom, mom. They're around, yeah? And if, you, if you're young and you just had your kids, it can be challenging. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's uh, particularly as women, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit of a challenge, being able to do your traditional womanly roles and mm -hmm. still working and you're in the same environment, you're working in the same environment, you're doing your roles, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is so very true. That's the same thing a lot of educators have said. Because when you're home and you have your lunch break, you're thinking, okay, I'll just put the clothes in the machine. I'll just, you know, I'll just do this. And before you know it, you are exhausted. Because you didn't take the time off for the lunch break. You just thought, oh, I could cook while I'm, you know, while I have this break. I could do this. And it's tiring because I remember when I did the first, you know, because I taught for two weeks online. You're thinking, okay, now that I'm taking a little break, I'll do this. You start cooking. The time you get back, you're exhausted. You say, hold on. I'm exhausted. So I do find this is important that we start separating it. You're teaching, when you finish teaching in the evening time, sit as you're going home. Because the line between home and teaching online is very, very blur. And as a result yes. of that, educators, you're constantly on the go. You're constantly on the go. And that is very so true. crucial that we actually take time, yeah. Yeah, that is very, very true. Before I put my, my self-care systems in place, I, saw, I, I had a day of, of experiencing burnout. I was just feeling sick and I'm not sick. You know, you feel tired, you feel drained and you're not sick, you know? And all I had to do is just sleep. And then the next day I woke up and I was fine. 
because you're trying to do all these things you're trying to attend yes. your class you're trying like I'll do, you know i'll just uh, finish up with those dishes i'll just prepare dinner <laughs> then before you know it you've actually really exhausted yourself yeah yeah it is so right so that's why it is so important to do the separation or else you're going to be burned out because you're thinking it's just a small thing to do etc so that's one of the the challenges some educators have said to me in terms of teaching online that was a challenge for me as well in terms of okay i've got a few minutes i'm gonna do the dishes i'm gonna put the spot on the fire you know and it's like you're constantly doing bits and pieces and as you said before you know it's you're totally exhausted and you're thinking oh my goodness you know so i start leaving that and i say you know what when i come at the you know at the desk I am in school. When I have my break, I sit, I read, and then you come back online. All right, it means that you are doing all these things and you're tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's really, really important that we separate. Mm -hmm. So, how would you actually sum up online teaching? So, you know, because I've said the challenges and triumph of online teaching. So, what mm -hmm. would you say were the challenges? Challenges of number one, like I said in the beginning, is of course uh, becoming familiar with all the platforms that are available. That was the number one challenge. Uh, number two, you have to be flexible with your students so that you can properly facilitate their learning. Uh, number three, uh, exams. You have to set your examinations and assessments in such a way that uh, you have to be creative. Yeah, you have to be creative yeah. in terms of the, the assignments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then uh, what else? Then just finding a balance so that you avoid being overwhelmed. Yeah. Teaching from yeah. home, yeah. working yeah. from home. Yeah. Finding a balance. Yeah. 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 So I would summarize mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. in those four points. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so someone who, so that's, that's how you want to summarize it. So those are all the triumphs. What are the challenges? <laughs> what are your challenges? Okay, I think they are somehow intertwined with those four points. <laughs> um, Sorry. They are somehow intertwined with the four points. Yeah. Because okay, yeah, okay. yeah, they are somehow intertwined. In those four points, there is there is the challenge, and there is how we and overcame it, it, and how it became a triumph. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. What else can I add? I think okay. that's it. Really. Yeah. Don't okay. For mm -hmm. okay, so what three tips or good practice would you give anybody who going to the online platform now for the first time? I would tell them to familiarize with the technology. Nowadays, there are so many platforms that are offering courses on how to use the different platforms that are available for, for education. Yeah, so familiarize with that. Number two, be ready to adjust your, be flexible to accommodate your students and for yourself as well. Yeah, then separate work and school and uh, to separate school your teaching time and home yeah mm -hmm. put systems in place if it means mm -hmm. yeah if it means you tell the people you're living with i am this is my class time mm -hmm. don't interrupt don't, don't expect me to be there for you to come and maybe fix for you so have systems in place to just make a to create a boundary yeah mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. also Enjoy it, yeah. Enjoy it. <laughs> Online uh, teaching has its benefits. Yeah. <laughs> Some yeah. good things about it. So enjoy it. Don't uh, be open-minded. Mm -hmm. Don't be rigid about it. Just find a way to enjoy it. You know, mm -hmm. find mm -hmm. the positives and then run with it and just enjoy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I like the fact that you know you said there's we need to enjoy the online platform because I must say I have thoroughly enjoyed it although I was in there for two weeks I have learned a hell of a lot 
because as I keep saying, we knew nothing. And you basically had to make YouTube your tutor because YouTube was my tutor, you know, in terms of how to do things and how not to do things. And then I found a number of groups, you know, Facebook groups online that were actually saying, you know, they were messaging what they did and how they managed to do this and the different platform. I never realized there were so many platforms out there. How many platforms did you use? Uh, to teach? Yeah, so for resources, you know, what you send the student in. Did you send the student into different platforms in terms of, you know, to do different areas? How do you, you know, what were the platforms? Yeah. I used that, uh, I used YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I used, uh, the other day recommended a student to go to Khan Academy. They have uh, some academic oh, yes. content there. Yeah. Yes, yes, I yes. sent them to, what's the other one? There's, um, I'm forgetting. Yeah, but Khan Academy and the slide, slide share also has some content. Khan what is that? Slide share. Okay, yes. Slide share has some content. So, when a student is uh, having difficulty understanding something and I know it's there on those platforms, mm -hmm. I'll just ask them to go and look at it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So I've used such platforms. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, it's interesting though, because for the primary and secondary years, there, there seems to be a lot more platform educators were using because some of the platform they were talking about, I thinking, whoa, and I said, yes, because some of them were using one set of platform for maths, another set for English. And if their institution were using one platform, they were using another platform. So in terms of platform, there were so many platforms out there at one time. I think it could be quite confusing for the students. Oh, yeah, yeah. For the hospitality, uh, hospitality industry, there isn't much written compared to other fields of, of education. So there aren't too many to, to refer the students to, yeah? Okay, okay. Yeah, and then the journals are more, if you refer students to go and read journals, they are, they are, um, they, their target audience are tourists who are going to visit a place. It's not really academic, yeah? Okay. So in hospitality, I, um, maybe I've not explored enough, but uh, I haven't seen much. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So your your college, did they all use Zoom? So you only use Zoom platform, right? Just Zoom you've used. Yeah, we only use Zoom. Okay, so the whole college used Zoom. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. so you guys did not try um, Google Classroom or Teams. That wasn't. Uh, no, we didn't try the other platforms. And Zoom seems to work for us just fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Zoom works for us just fine. All right, okay, okay, okay. Right. When are you guys going back? When are you going back into school? Is it physical or online? How are you guys doing that? So right now we are still online. Uh, the, the news from the government said schools will open in 2021, next year. So we have to, yeah, we have to comply unless, uh, unless something else comes up, yeah? But we have to, to comply to the government regulations. So for us to go back there, physical classrooms, we have to wait until 2021. Okay, so you guys had a holiday, you, had, you were on holidays already. Have you been on holidays for the summer? No, our system is a, uh, we do a trimester. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we do, we had the, our holidays are very, it's just a month. So we had, we're supposed to have an, a holiday in April. Yeah, mm -hmm. because we do Jan, Feb, March, then mm -hmm. holiday in April, mm -hmm. then May, June, July, then holiday in August, then September, October, November, then December holiday. But now, okay. yeah, but because of the, the, because of the way the country is, our holidays have somehow been interrupted, yeah. Okay, so have you guys had the, the, the August holiday? 
we didn't actually have a holiday. We continued teaching. So and you, you guys have what? A okay. <laughs> I know I lost you there, but I'm I'm not sure if I'm supposed to give out this information. I hope I don't get in trouble. But uh, this is what happened. We 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 started a semester in May, uh -huh. May, June, July. Then when we are in June, there was a demand. Other students wanted to join the, the program. So oh, okay. we yeah, so we started another one in July. Okay. Yeah, so we've done July, August, we'll finish in September. Okay. So which means yeah. you're having holiday in September. Uh we are starting another one in September. Okay, okay, okay. Like we won't really have holiday. Right. Yeah, we won't really have holiday. So maybe in December we might have holiday because uh, the students and parents keep changing their mind. We tell them there is uh, your, we are running an online program and they don't join. Then it gets to a certain point, they're like, uh, we want to join. So we can't keep, we can't deny them the opportunity. So we allow them to join, and we now we create a, a, a second semester within another semester. Yeah. Okay. 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 Wow. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because it means that you are constantly on this online platform. Yeah. Yeah. Good thing is uh, that my, our classes are not. Uh, Okay, there are some lecturers who are very busy, but we try not to have classes back to back. And if we mm -hmm. have classes back to back, we ensure we have a break. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a break. In yes, it's overwhelming. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll tell you that for sure. Especially mm -hmm. in the months that the semesters were overlapping, it mm -hmm. was quite overwhelming. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we managed. We managed to somehow get through that month mm -hmm. and continue with the the rest of the, of the semester. Mm -hmm. So how many students do you have in your classroom? On uh, online, online classroom, how many students do you have? How many students do you have in one lesson? Uh, it varies. There's a class that I have, uh, there's a class that I have three students. There's a class that I have nine students. There's a class that I have only one student. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because because of the college setup, you know, college is uh, yeah. you're taking this course and you're done with it and you take another one, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. What? Okay. So you guys going back? Okay. So because we are going back on the we are going back supposedly in September. But mm -hmm. we are going back supposedly in the physical classroom. Mm -hmm. um, what are your views in terms of school reopening? So yours, you know, you have no issue in terms of your school, your school reopening anyway. You know, <laughs> because in terms of, you know, because mm -hmm. some people were still on holiday. So my thing for them was, you know, what was the you know, their opinion in terms of school opening, but yours have just continued rolling on, you know, because it seems yeah, like you guys yeah. operate a roll on roll of set up curriculum, isn't it? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, schools, but we need to have a reopening because of the practical classes. Yeah, right. we need, yeah, we need to have a reopening. And uh, my opinion on that, it's uh what do i say it's it's uh <laughs> it's good for schools to reopen so that life can continue but we will have a few challenges yeah number one we sanitizing and wearing masks like in a practical class let's say those who are doing like you mentioned if they need to bake bread you're in the kitchen you have a mask on you have to keep distance between your, your, the, the teacher and the student. Mm. And sometimes the teacher needs to come close to check, mm. even test 
what you you you've made mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that maybe they need to touch the door to ensure it's the right consistency mm -hmm. so it's going to be very very tricky on the technical part of it mm -hmm. and then of course the psychological aspect mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. uh we've been learning at home where we are comfortable mm -hmm. now we have to commute to mm -hmm. go to school mm -hmm. yeah both teachers and students Mm -hmm. Of course, it's going to be stressful. It's a change, and change is never easy. Change mm -hmm. comes with uh, a lot of anxiety. Change comes with, uh, with uh, stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe we need to do it gradually, start slowly before mm -hmm. we may transition into what things used to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's, it's going to be psychologically, it's going to be hard. And this is the point where we need to. We need to have some empathy. We need mm -hmm. to be very considerate. We need mm -hmm. to think about we are going through a stressful thing. Change is stressful. And so let's try to be more understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. students fail to come to class, we need to encourage them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not be very strict on you did not come, you have your punishment. We need to be more understanding, allow them to, to adjust, encourage mm -hmm. them. We are going to do a lot of encouraging, yeah, mm -hmm. because it's, it's going to be challenging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so very true. I agree with everything you said, because especially when we go into the, on, to the physical classroom, the students are coming with a bag, with a pile of baggages. And, you know, I also feel that we are not equipped as educators to deal with this baggages the students are coming with. So it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a tough thing for us in terms of going back into the physical classroom or even on the online classroom. Because some students that have had a break and you're bringing them online, the challenge is, is you know, how are they going to interact with the new class that they've just got? How are they going to, in terms of connect? Connecting in a general basis quite, can be quite challenging. So how are they able to do that? It's, it's, a, it's a tough situation, whether or not it is in the physical classroom or the online classroom. It's a tough thing. It is, and um, I think um, somebody, let me say somebody should come up with a, what we call in psychology is psychological first aid or uh, something that before you go back to teaching as normal, take your students through this, yeah? Uh, have a debriefing, mm -hmm. talk to ask them, so how was it for you? How was it being at home? Are you able to adjust? Because I, I saw in one of your platforms, you talked about people have experienced loss, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People have lost a whole, in some situations, people have lost a, a whole academic year. Mm -hmm. Those our country those who are doing their final primary school to graduate to mm -hmm. secondary school, they are going to have to go back and stay mm -hmm. another year before they move on so mm -hmm. people have lost uh, in one way or another so before we mm -hmm. go back to normal school we need to have a debriefing for every class yeah ask them how was mm -hmm. it are you ready? Mm -hmm. How are you adjusting? What can how can we support each other? You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is the time to be more human. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is the time to remember that we are just human beings trying to get through life, and mm -hmm. we might be having one challenge here and there. And yeah, and some people have lost so much. Some mm -hmm. businesses are closed. Yeah. So maybe they will have to adjust from living in a very comfortable situation, a nice house and all that, and now going to live in a different setting. So we have to consider that before we start teaching. These are not robots, these are human beings. It is very true. I don't think, I think the, the quicker we get it in our head that the situation will not be back to normal. Hell no, it would never be back to normal because there have been too many things that have taken place. So we just exactly. have to adjust how we are, you know, we just have to adjust to things and we just have to, you know, see things as it is now because there's no way it's going to be back to normal, no way, because there are too many things that like I said have taken place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, what, in terms of, to sum up, what mm -hmm. would you sum up in terms of 
what would you say to people in terms of the online platform? You know, what would you like to say as, you know, one or two summary? Okay. So, mm, I've said so much already. I've said the, all the important things. <laughs> okay. If you, you guys have anything, that's fine. If you feel there isn't anything else, you know, to that say. Is yeah, just to encourage the teachers you're doing a good job, try your best, do your level best. If you're not uh, performing as you expected, forgive yourself, pick yourself up and uh, try again. If, you, if you're having a challenge somewhere, it's okay to ask for help. I know teachers are seen as the, like you're saying, superheroes, but remember you're not a superhero. If you need help, ask for help. Even if it means asking for help from your family members, ask for help. If it means asking for help from the institution, ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. Uh, maybe technology is not your thing and you're struggling. Ask for help. It's okay. And yeah, enjoy it. So I'll say it again. Just enjoy it. Yeah. And this is not the end of the world. If we are still here, we'll overcome. Be comfortable in the uncomfortable situation. Mm -hmm. then we will overcome yeah mm -hmm. thank you for that i like that in terms of we will overcome you know one of the things educators you know just to summarize educators you need to start forgiving yourself and stop being so hard on yourself forgive yourself you have done very well make no mistake about that because you're coming from a place of not knowing anything to a place of knowing enough to teach your student. So that's a big thing. Praise yourself. Be kind to yourself. Stop beating up on yourself. If you don't know something, ask as Brenda say, which is so very true, because educators always feel that they should always have all the answers. Hell no. You should not have all the answer. You're just as human as everybody else. Stop setting up expectation that you should know all the answers. No, ask for help. And the more you ask for help, when you don't know the answer, you're gonna find that you begin to really enjoy the online platform. It is not going anywhere. So we might as well start embracing it because sooner or later, it's gonna be in the classroom forever. So we might as well say, you know what? This was an opportunity to learn how it works. We now know how it works. Embrace it and run with it. So thank you very much, guys, for listening. It was a fantastic session once again. Please share, like, and comment. And thank you, guys. Have a fantastic evening, morning, night, wherever you are. Please don't forget to come online because I am online every day from from six o'clock to seven seven after seven or just after six it's difficult to tell even though the times i aim to come on at six o'clock but there's sometimes when i'm actually trying to log on onto the platform the challenges of online is immense because there's sometimes trying to get online with my educators is really challenging. Yesterday was a typical day that I tried, 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 and yeah, we just gave up because Zoom was kicking our out, Zoom was kicking me out at one time. So this is the challenge of trying to do things online and at the same time ensuring that I have the view of educators around the world. Because I'm recording from the UK, I do not want the views only from educators in UK. I want to hear from everybody globally to, to, to share the experience because we might be in different countries. Believe me, we are having similar experiences. And it is so very important that these experiences are shared so that educators realize that they're not alone in this challenge. We are all experiencing this challenge and we are all on this journey. We might be in different boats, but we still on the same challenge, going the same direction. So thank you very much, everybody. It was a fantastic session. I am grateful for you guys tuning in. You know, the fact that you guys are giving me your time, I am grateful for that. Thank you very much. And I'll see you guys tomorrow evening at six o'clock with another fantastic educator from around the world sharing her experiences. Thank you and 